Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, August 24th. The time is 4.35 p.m. and the temperature right now is around 27 degrees Celsius. And I'm here in downtown Toronto. And that there is the intersection of Bay Street and King Street West. And this is in the heart of the financial district. And there's a look up at what is for now the tallest building in the city and the entire country for that matter. That's first Canadian place. And for this one, I'm going to take an early rush hour walk around the financial district. And I'll be following the same route that I did in a video I recorded back on Tuesday, November 5th in 2019. And that's actually the third most watched video on this channel of all time. And that currently has 353,000 views. And along the way, we'll be checking out a lot of the skyscrapers here in the financial district. And this here on the left is the iconic TD Center. And it looks like they're setting up for some sort of event, either setting up or tearing it down. And there's a look up at the TD Center itself. I believe that is currently the 15th tallest building in the city. And that was completed in 1967. And at the time it dominated the Toronto skyline. And there's another of other towers that are part of this complex, including this one here. I believe that is TD North. And that is one of the original towers designed by Mies van der Rohe. And there's a number of what have been dubbed to be imposter towers that have gone up since then as well. In fact, towers have gone up in 67, which is the original one, 1969, 74, 85, 91. And I think there was one more. has gone up. I think this one here is also one of the original towers. And this is the TD Center Courtyard. And this grass is pretty wet. I don't think it rained earlier today. It might have been blasted with some sprinklers. So as per that walk I did back in 2019, I'm going to walk along Wellington here over to York Street, then I'll head north up to King, and then I'll walk west over to University Avenue. And I think I'll head north up to Adelaide Street and take that over to Scotia Plaza, and I'll cut through that back down to King, and then I'll walk over to Young, and eventually find my way to Bay Street, and I'll walk south down the front. here is Wellington Street West. And there's a look to the east. I've installed it in coolers like this on my other PC. So this is west on Wellington Street West. And Toronto is easily the skyscraper can capital of Canada. I think the top six skyscrapers are located here, at least height-wise. And it sits third in North America, just behind Chicago. And New York City is well in the lead in that race. Although in recent years, Toronto has had more high-rises under construction than New York. And I think it's set to surpass Chicago at some point in the near future.
Ooh, this is directly into the sunlight. Good thing I'll be turning north when I get to York Street. All right, so I just ran into a former coworker. And we just talked for a minute. I think I'll cut that part out of the video. So I was reading on Reddit the other day that there's 77 skyscrapers in Toronto, and I think that would entail buildings that are over 150 meters or 492 feet. And there's currently 209 either proposed or under construction. And this here is north of York Street. So the financial district is loosely bound to the north by Queen Street and to the west, which is over to my left by University Avenue, and to the east by Young Street, and to the south by Front Street, although it's really been expanding south into what's known as the South Core. There's a look into the TD Center, and there's Commerce Court West rising up in the back. I think there's actually a new Commerce Court Tower planned. And that one will be 300 meters, which is the magic number to be classified as a super tall, something which Toronto currently doesn't have any of. But there's a few that are under construction right now. And we are at King Street again. look to the east back towards where I started. You can see there's a pretty neat skyscraper canyon along King. There's an even better one on Adelaide. And I'll be passing through there in a couple of minutes. Maybe a little more than that. So this is University Avenue coming up, and that's the western boundary of the financial district. And just beyond that, you'll find yourself in the entertainment district. And these glass towers here, are part of the Sun Life Center. They're not particularly tall. I think about 125 meters or 410 feet for the tallest one. And the other tower is a little shorter than that. And a look south down University Avenue. And I think that's 160 Front Street West with the crane in it reaching up into the sky. So 
So I'll be turning right on Adelaide Street here. East on Adelaide. I was wondering what this bus is doing here. Currently says not in service. And Adelaide will soon be dug up to restore the streetcar tracks along here. As a new subway line will be built along Queen Street just to the north of here and they will not be able to run the streetcar along that stretch. So eastbound streetcars will divert down here to Adelaide and westbound ones will divert to Richmond, which is just a block to the north of here. Always like this view. You can see a number of the tallest buildings in the city right now. There's First Canadian Place, the big white one, and Scotia Plaza and the St. Regis right behind it. This is York Street. Hinged guy and has found his way over to York Street. That's the TV center in the center of the shot. One of the newer additions to the financial district is coming up just on the left, the Ernst & Young Tower. That was completed in 2017, and I used to work above the 50th floor in First Canadian Place. I remember watching them build this. That's this big glass tower on the left, right next to this freaky 3D head sculpture. This tower is, I think, 188 meters, which is around 617 feet. And it incorporates the facade of an old Art Deco tower that dates back to 1928. It currently houses Google, as well as the Toronto Stock Exchange. I think the stock exchange might actually be in this tower right next to it. But this is the concourse building, or at least the front of it. Tallest building in the city, first Canadian place, 298 meters. And we'll be heading over past the St. Regis pretty soon. That's the second tallest at 277 meters or 908 feet. 
first Canadian place was completed in 1977. Actually, I think it was 1975. And it's worth noting that most of these towers are connected via the underground path network. And that always accounts for one of the reasons why there doesn't seem to be so many people at street level. I was at a Bill Burr comedy show at the Scotiabank Arena last night and he was joking about how we were one of those miserable cities that had to have an underground path network for the winter time because it got so cold here. There's pasta. So this is Bay and Adelaide. Classic Toronto driving right here. For whatever reason, people just can't seem to wait for an intersection to be clear before they enter it. So the St. Regis is on the right, and that originally opened as the Trump International Hotel. And I did a video walking through here and showing off some of the amenities in the property as well as exploring one of the hotel rooms. And you can find that on the channel. And it is the second tallest building in the city. But really, it's kind of cheating. It uses an architectural element to stretch up taller than the building next to it, which is Scotia Plaza. So there's the St. Regis on the right at 277 meters or 908 feet. And on the left, Scotia Plaza, which is 275 meters or 902 feet. And that was part of the building boom back in the late 80s. A number of notable towers went up in the city at that time. And one notable tower that didn't go up was the Bay Adelaide Center, the original version which had started construction and there was a six story stump left on the lot. I think construction halted in two, or 1993. And for about 15 years, there was a six story stump on a vacant lot, but eventually three towers rose, known as the Bay Adelaide Center. And the tallest one, is 715 feet. I don't seem to have the meters in front of me. And I think that was completed in 2009, and there's been a few additions since then. Now we're going to cut through Scotia Plaza and get a view of Commerce Court North on the other side. And in that original video I filmed back in 2019, I was asked to stop recording in here. I had wandered into the old bank, which is just on the right. There's a winner's discount department store. And the elevator banks on the right. And here's where security told me off. And you 
can see part of the old tower that's been incorporated into Scotia Plaza. back to King Street. There's a look at Commerce Court West. That's the seventh tallest building in the city and right next to it is Commerce Court North. That's an old Art Deco skyscraper. And that was completed in 1931 and it stands at 239 meters or 784 feet. And it was the tallest building in the British Empire when it was completed. It surpassed the Royal York Hotel, which is just to the south of here on Front Street. And this is taking us towards Young Street and King Station is just ahead here. The financial district served by Queen subway station on the northeast and just south of that is King and south of here is Union and then that'll loop you up to St. Andrew which I walked past earlier on the west side and on the very northwest corner you'd have Osgood station and there's an old 12-story high-rise building with a new, new-ish hotel next to it, One King West. That was developed by Harry Stinson. And I did a video talking about the history of that building and exploring the hotel property there earlier in the year. Much like the St. Regis one, you can find that on the channel. So all these people here are waiting for a westbound streetcar. King Street is a designated transit priority corridor, so the streetcars tend to move pretty quickly through the financial district, and that was a big problem until they declared it a transit corridor. And what that means is for most of the intersections, cars cannot travel straight through. They have to turn, and that has reduced congestion significantly on King. Now it's north up Young Street. So this is the very eastern end of the financial district. And for some reason, this was the most viewed part of that video I recorded back in 2019. And that guy should not have that thing on the sidewalk. And that's look south towards Lake Ontario. And this is taking us back up to Adelaide Street. I'm having a moment here. I can't remember if I went west on Temperance or if I went up to Richmond Street. I'm going to pull that older video up and see here. Oh, it looks like I went on Temperance Street over to Bay. Uh, it's just a block to the north of here. And there's a look west.
I mentioned that Toronto doesn't really have any super talls, not unless you include the CN Tower, but currently there are seven under construction or proposed at 300 meters or 1,000 feet. There's a look at the streetcar tracks that will soon be restored. Temperance, and this will take us in front of the Bay Adelaide Center. There's the Hong Kong Trade Center on the left. There's the newest addition to the Bay Adelaide Center, the North Tower. I've always found these to be rather underwhelming in their design and impact on the skyline. The city's almost plagued by these generic glass boxes. And these ones don't do it any favor. But from here, you do get a pretty awesome view of what is my favorite skyscraper in Toronto. There's Scotia Plaza. And I remember going to my grandparents' apartment building way back in the 80s and watching that go up over the skyline. TD Canada Trust Tower went up around the same time. And we'll be walking past that shortly. So four of the tallest five buildings in the city are in the financial district. Aura at College Park is the other one on that list that is just to the north of here. And it's back to Bay Street. So we're gonna walk south here down to front. There's a view of Old City Hall just to the north. And what looks to be a pretty mean sky off in the distance, although I don't think the forecast is calling for rain later. the old Canada permanent building on the right. Right next to a Bank of Montreal. And I think on the left, this is called the National Club. And 
and this is one of the reasons why the St. Regis has such a small footprint at Bay in Adelaide. Southbound on Bay Street at this time is always rather backed up. As people are making their way down to the Gardner Expressway. And here's one of those classic views you might see in postcards. And it is soon to disappear. The CN Tower is getting covered up by 160 Front Street West, and that's a tower. Well, how's TD Bank and the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan? Here's Commerce Court West on the left. And on the right here, the original stock exchange facade has been incorporated into one of the imposter buildings at the TD Center. That was one of the ones that went up well after the fact and was not designed by Mies van der Rohe. I'm incorrect on any info. Feel free to fill me in in the comments down below. And another view at First Canadian Place. That building is almost twins with the Aeon Center in Chicago. The one in Chicago is built a little bit before ours and is a little bit taller. And they're both built out of the same Italian marble. The Aon Center was fully reclad in a much different material. And First Canadian Place was reclad in a glass that was designed to mimic the look of the original marble. For a break in traffic here. There we go. And we're back to Wellington Street. And there is the Royal Bank Center. There is real gold embedded in those windows. I think about $70 worth of gold can be found in each window pane. It came at a time when the big banks were flexing their wealth. And one of the towers is 180 meters tall. I think the other one is 114. And over there is a building that was known as Brookfield Place. And the Royal Bank Towers on the right here went up in the late 70s. which is the TD Canada Trust Tower, 
was one of those late 1980s buildings. I think it might have been, actually been completed in 1990. And the slightly taller Bay Wellington Center is right next to it on the left. And that is also where you'd find the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's been incorporated into the southeast corner of that building. This is Front Street coming up, and that is CIBC Square straight ahead, and that would be part of the South Core District. The South Core being located south of Front, down to the lake, and a number of large office towers and hotels and condos have popped up in recent years. Union Station here has gone from being at the south end of things to sort of right in the middle, thanks to the South Core. And there's a look east on front. was just in this area yesterday. I went to a German beer and sausage restaurant called Wurst. Their main location is on King West, but they've got one there in Union Station. And then I went to see Bill Burr just south of there at the Scotiabank Arena. And I mentioned that Commerce Court North was formerly the tallest building in the British Empire. Well, for two years before it was completed, the Royal York Hotel here stood as the tallest. That was completed back in 1929. And that stands at 124 meters or 407 feet. And it's not uncommon to see a lot of nice cars in the parking area there. So I think what I did in that original video was I walked just over the York Street here and then I crossed south and I jumped into Union Station. There's currently a food festival of sorts going on right in front of it. the iconic Royal York Hotel on the right. It was renamed the Fairmont Royal York. And there was talk about completely renaming it. And I think there was a lot of public backlash and outrage. So rather than rename the whole hotel, Fairmont did the right thing and called it the Fairmont Royal York. I think Rogers could learn a lesson from them. Ontario Tech Ridgebacks. I have no idea what that is or what that means. But this is the foot of University Avenue here. On the right side we have York Street. And branching to the left we have University. building rising over there is 160 Front Street West. That's the building that's blocking that neat view of the CN Tower.
There's the view of the Royal York, which once dominated the Toronto skyline. Until Commerce Court North surpassed it. And the next building to truly dominate the skyline would have been the TD Center. And then after that, first Canadian place and the CN Tower. tempted to just grab dinner here since I'm in the area. So rather than head down into the subway, I'm going to wrap this one up. So I hope you enjoyed this one, walking around the financial district as I recreated the route from my third most popular video ever. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And there's now a super thanks button appearing below these videos. All right, thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one.